number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Zawahiri's killing exposes Taliban regime's ties with Al-Qaeda. Pakistan turning Balochistan into graveyard. And Indian security forces neutralized Lashkar terrorist in Baramulla. Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri's assassination in Kabul this week is a major source of embarrassment for the Taliban as it undermines the group's pledge to not provide members of Al-Qaeda and networks like it with a safe haven. It was one of the terms of the Doha Agreement originally negotiated by former U.S. President Donald Trump in 2020. Al-Qaeda Zawahiri was discovered living in a safe house in the center of Afghanistan's capital. A report. Two Hellfire missiles fired from a drone killed the leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri in Kabul, causing surprisingly little damage beyond the target. Zawahiri had a $25 million bounty on his head and helped to coordinate September 11, 2001 attacks on the United States that killed nearly 3,000 people. Reports have emerged stating that U.S. intelligence tracked down the reclusive Al-Qaeda terrorist in Afghanistan early this year after he relocated from Pakistan to a Taliban-backed safe house in a rich area in central Kabul. My fellow Americans, on Saturday, at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan, that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. Born in 1951 to a prominent Egyptian family, Zawahiri was a grandson of the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, one of Islam's most important mosques. A surgeon by profession, Zawahiri went on to become the leader of one of the country's most feared militant groups, Islamic Jihad, convincing disillusioned young men to turn against the US-backed state. Later, he succeeded Osama bin Laden as Al-Qaeda's leader in 2011. <laughs> The fact that Al Zawahri was present in Afghanistan during his last days has put the Taliban government in a tight spot. International legitimacy has remained elusive for the regime, which came to power after capturing Kabul a year ago amid the massive withdrawal of US troops. The Taliban have been under fire for going soft on terror groups operating from the Afghan territory, despite having pledged to combat terrorism in accordance with the 2020 Doha Agreement. Now senior U.S. officials have said that the fugitive Al-Qaeda leader was hosted in Kabul by the Haqqani network, a powerful faction within the Taliban with deep ties to the Pakistani intelligence community. 
the drone strike on Al Zawahri's residence less than two kilometers from the Taliban's intelligence headquarters in Kabul shows U.S. officials unilateral action rather than trusting the Taliban. We have communicated very directly with Taliban leaders um, uh, our views of, of uh, their willingness at, at some level, of course, to, to harbor uh, Zawahiri and, uh, and his family. Um, and we have made it clear that not we believe, not we think, not we suppose, but we know that that's a violation of the Doha Agreement. Pakistan, too, has a lot of explaining to do as Al-Zawahri was long believed to have been living in that country. There's an urgent need to intensify pressure on Afghanistan and Pakistan to take verifiable action for rooting out terrorism, which poses a serious threat to peace and stability in the subcontinent and beyond. Baluchistan, which was once a very prosperous land with rich history and culture, has now become a graveyard under Pakistani occupation. Ever since the invasion of Baluchistan, the series of gross human rights violations in the shape of murders, abductions, killings and rapes started. Pakistan army has become a brutal mass murderer and the biggest authority in Baluchistan. Take a look. Pakistan army has a strong control over the lives of people in Balochistan. Baloch people are being deprived of every basic right and are being tortured by security agencies. Harassment, killing, enforced disappearance and torture by Pakistan security forces have put Baloch people in such a situation that even the educated women are resorting to a unique form of protest including a suicide bombing. It is not uncommon, unfortunately, to find mutilated dead bodies in various stages of decomposition and beyond recognition dotting the roads of Balochistan. Mass graves were found in Balochistan for the first time in 2014 in Turbat. And since then, every year the people of the region discovered similar graves in different areas. In each case, the discovery follows the same pattern. The army and intelligence agencies cordons off the area, keeping people away. Nobody really knows how many dead bodies are buried there and who they were. The complete media blackout over the region means very little news is coming out of the Balochistan. And the news that does make it to the national papers is relegated to a corner of the media that few rarely see. पाकिस्तान के 21 इंसानी अक्का ने खिलाफ वर्जी करने गए हैं लक्का मुखलूक देव कुर्ता लक्का मुखलूक शहीद कुर्ता लक्का मुखलूक को दी कस्टडी या तहवील या कायदता शहीद करने गए कि चिकस कब्रिस्तान आबाद हैं या कब्रिस्तान दर्शन इस पिलिंज या आबाद हैं मस्त होंगा कि दुनिया इंटरनेशनल मीडिया � Amekas and Tutekar, the Samekas, Rakshan, Panjurashuma, the Samekas, Wanda Abadin, or Amekas Baluchstan and Mukhtar Pesa Mani. The Baluchistan conflict has a strong complex history, but since the time the region caught China's eye, conflict has intensified. Baloch nationalists forming many groups have been fighting the state to oppose curbs on civil rights and the China-Pakistan economic corridor projects that they say deprive Baloch of natural resources while giving few jobs. China is acting like foe of Baloch people by collaborating with Pakistan, the enemy of the Baloch nation. Islamabad and Beijing jointly want to strengthen Punjabi colonization over Balochistan for expansionist evil designs and economic benefits. Baloch Arashuma, Narande Kanagai, Baloch Arashuma, Ashwati Deha Kashagai, Baloch Marumil Kataba Kanagai, Yakku name Lak Mardum Eu Kashto, Achrakshana Bigir Take, Kechata. 
ہمیں سی پہ گسرا اے ہمیں وطن ہے ہمیں سرزمین جا میں نے دا کہ زندگی قوما دا وہ چھوڑا میڑے کورٹ میں رکھنا ہے چکی چائنا The immediate step of the world community should be to pass a resolution in the United Security Council requiring Pakistan to allow UN observers in Balochistan and complete pause on military operations. The UN must force Pakistan to allow international media access to Balochistan and ensure free and fair reporting. Unless the global community as a whole comes forward to defend and protect the collective notions of humanity, the genocide of Baloch people will continue. Let's once again turn our attention to Afghanistan which has been marred with isolated attacks taking place across the length and breadth of the country particularly after the Taliban stormed to power in August last year since then desperate militia groups in their bid to exert their dominance have launched several attacks in the latest a suicide blast rocked the Kabul International Cricket Stadium during a cricket match multiple casualties were reported from the stadium Take a look. Eight months after the United States withdrawal allowed the Taliban to regain control, violence in Afghanistan is escalating, raising fears that it could once more serve as a hotspot for unrest and terrorism in South and Central Asia and beyond. Terrorists with intentions of waging a global jihad have long used Afghanistan as a base. Numerous organizations that have existed since the Taliban's last period of rule from 1996 to 2001 are once more operational and looking for ways to increase their influence. However, the de facto rulers of the war-torn country do not seem to be concerned as they are desperate to get recognition. Recently, an explosion went off and killed two spectators in Kabul International Cricket Stadium during a T20 domestic league game between Bandi Ahmed Dragons and Pamir Zalmi. The blast took place on a weekly holiday in the country and a sizable crowd was gathered to watch the match. No group has yet taken responsibility for the attack. These attacks on Gurudwaras killing innocent people who are worshipping stadiums are digressive and are the result of various splinter groups that exist in the country. Taliban earlier was involved in these kind of terrorist attacks. Once it came into power, it has a major problem in fighting with the other groups like the ISKP or the uh, Farasan or for that matter the Al-Qaeda. We have seen that Ayman al-Zawahiri was killed recently, uh, who was the head of the Al-Qaeda globally. And so there are some actions here and there taking place. But some misguided people actually feel that playing cricket is anti-Islam. What nonsense, utter rubbish. So we have these kind of people, they try to create a dissonance in the society, a regressive culture in the society, which which will take back uh, Afghanistan. This is not the first time a cricket stadium has witnessed an explosion. There have been other instances of violence directed at cricket. In Afghanistan's Jalalabad city, on May 18, 2018, four explosives were exploded inside a cricket stadium, which killed eight people and injured several others. In September 2017, three people were killed and many were injured in a suicide bombing which was planted by Islamic State terrorists at a cricket match in Afghan capital, Kabul. Though the Taliban group claims to have protected the country since taking power in August last year and largely eliminated the Islamic State's local offshoot, the international officials and analysts believe the risk of resurgence in attacks remains. As the Islamic State terrorists have been targeting the Afghan security forces, religious minorities, including Shia Muslims and Sikhs. 
the sudden withdrawal of the United Nations forces, United States forces from uh, and the NATO forces from uh, Afghanistan have led to the kind of destabilization that we are witnessing today. There is no doubt about it because there was no smooth handing over, taking over. This was an agreement that was signed with Taliban whom the Americans did not trust or at least they did not believe in what the, uh, they had signed on. And then subsequently, the whatever be the regime there, they have not been recognized, they have not been provided adequate assistance, people of Afghanistan are suffering. And when people go to that extent uh, of desperation, a very large number of them could uh, resort to uh, extremist activities and terrorist activities, and it is quite possible they become a bind of uh, disgruntled elements against the regimes, against the West, to whom they feel that the whole uh, predicament that they face today is entirely due to them. On the one hand, Afghanistan is always at risk from terrorism, while on the other, the Taliban's tight limitations have grabbed the nation. The hardliners deprived millions of Afghan women of their right to education, ousted tens of thousands of women from jobs, and banned women's businesses and all sorts of activism. They have trampled on Afghan women today and forced them back into the dark ages. More than 90% of Afghans have been experiencing a food shortage, thus the misery in Afghanistan extends beyond just the women. The Afghan people desired peace and an end to the wars in order to better their lot, but not at the expense of losing the accomplishments of the previous 20 years. Afghanistan's seemingly endless war appears to be far from over. Let's move on to India's Jammu and Kashmir where the situation is tense. People in the region are suffering due to Pakistan's sponsored terrorism. Out of frustration, Pakistan-backed terrorists in the valley are killing innocent civilians and security personnel to create unrest in the valley. There has also been several clashes between the security forces and terrorists in the region in recent months. Recently, Indian security forces neutralized a Lashkar terrorist in Baramula district and recovered several arms and ammunition from the site of encounter. Pakistan is enraged by the stability and progress in Jammu and Kashmir and does all in its power to sow instability and violence in the region. However, a series of operations are being carried out by the Indian security forces in Jammu and Kashmir to dismantle the network of park backed terrorism. Recently, terrorist organizations operating in the valley just suffered a severe blow. In the latest operation, security forces neutralized a Lashkar e Taiba terrorist identified as Rishat Ahmed Bhatt of Patan in Baramula district. An information concerning the presence of terrorists in the region was sent to a joint team of police and security services. After which, security forces launched a cordon and a search operation in the area. The police team recovered one AK-47 rifle, two magazines and 30 rounds of bullets from the site of the encounter. Pakistan is angry because of the stability and progress that is being made in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And therefore it is doing everything in its power uh, to sow the seeds of instability and violence in the region. A news comes that one or two terrorists get neutralized and their strength goes down. However, uh, what happens is that again they try and show their presence by uh, trying to attack some soft target like some of the police people who were on leave. They have been attacked and they have been killed. They, uh, in one case, uh, they uh, uh, threw a grenade uh, at a security post. Uh, in another case, uh, they tried to threaten people who were going in for music, etc. So 
they are basically targeting the soft targets, but they do not have the capability to carry out any worthwhile major attacks. Islamabad is consistently making efforts to escalate terror-related activities in Jammu and Kashmir. This has been happening in the last three to four weeks and it is coinciding with the situation in Pakistan. Their economy is in doldrums, inflation is at its peak and the army is being openly questioned. These instances have never happened in Pakistan. So a diversion is created by engineering attacks in Kashmir. In 2022, Kashmir has witnessed 75 encounters in which 126 terrorists have been killed. Out of this 126 terrorists, 33 were foreigners, mostly from Pakistan. However, 19 civilians have also died in various terror attacks in the valley, while 16 security personnel have also lost their lives. More than 50 terrorists have been arrested by the security forces this year, while over 190 overground workers have been captured as well. Today, it is, uh, it is appreciated that the number of terrorists still operating in the Kashmir Valley is in the region of 150 to 200 and their number will keep on decreasing. A Pakistani army is not able to support them with the help of artillery, fire, etc. because Pakistan itself is in deep trouble. Numerous Kashmiris have died in proxy wars started by Pakistan and they continue to suffer as a result of terrorist organizations backed by the Pakistani army and the ISI, the country's spy agency. Islamabad is unlikely to put an end to its proxy conflict in Kashmir because it's the most economical way to slay India with a thousand blows. As a result, Kashmir's authorities must address this issue. The police and security forces in Jammu and Kashmir need to work in synergy since the situation calls for hard intelligence. There is an urgent need to break the chain of these attacks. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, to keep writing to us at nwsanin.com. This is Yeshi Chonsom signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.